My name is Weldon Angelos. I was sentenced to 55 years in federal prison for selling roughly $1,000 worth of marijuana to a confidential informant. And I was recently released thanks to the grace and mercy of President Obama, Senator Mike Lee, and the Koch brothers. It was in the late 90s, I was working in the music industry. I was working with people like Snoop Dogg, Tupac Shakur's Outlaws. So I had a career that was uh, up and coming, but at the same time I had to pay the bills. I just had a second son. So I started selling marijuana on the side. I was selling small quantities and I was approached by a former acquaintance of mine who had just gotten out of prison and he decided to cooperate with the government. So he calls me up asking to purchase some marijuana from me. And so I sold him roughly $300 worth of marijuana on three occasions. For those three offenses, I got 55 years. Why were you selling marijuana? Well, to me, marijuana wasn't a big deal. You know, I wasn't selling meth or coke. I seen what meth had done to families. I seen what crack had done. So I chose weed because it's everywhere. It was part of the culture. We're, we're kicking with Snoop, smoking weed. There are people smoking weed in videos. Marijuana wasn't really, it doesn't damage families. So that's why I chose marijuana. And I was selling marijuana in Salt Lake City for roughly a couple years just to help pay the bills till my music career panned out. All right, so this informant does you in? Well, I get indicted first by the feds. And the confidential informant, six months after after the transactions made a new allegation that there was a firearm present during the transactions and that's basically what enhanced my sentence from what would have been maybe six months in jail to a 55 year sentence the government threw the books at me just something that still affects me to this day like sometimes i still have nightmares from that trial it was a terrible experience for less than a thousand dollars worth of marijuana correct in which state Utah, but and it's just, federal, so it applies to all 50 states. The Utah state law I would have probably did some county jail time, probably went to the county jail for six months or got probation, but it's the federal laws that gave me the 55 year sentence. And the federal laws apply to every state, California, Utah, everywhere, it's the same. So it depends on the prosecutor who's charging you. They choose what charges to, to make. They design the indictment how they want to do it. They can charge you under what's the, called the U.S. sentencing guidelines, or they can charge you under the statutory minimums. My prosecutor chose the statutory minimums, and that's what ended up giving me 55 years. Like I could have killed somebody and got less time than I got for selling marijuana. I could have actually shot the informant who set me up and I would have gotten 12 years if I would have shot him on the spot rather than sold the marijuana two more times. And that my judge made that point in his opinion. He had no choice and he actually expressed remorse for having to give me that sentence. And two months after I was convicted, my judge issued an order asking the government to justify this sentence and if it's even constitutional for him to sentence me to 55 years. He pulled the jury and asked the jury what they thought was an appropriate sentence, which is unprecedented in the federal system, judges don't do that. So my judge went out of his way, and when he realized that he had no choice but to give me at least 55 years, because the government asked for more, 63, 68, so he gave me the bare minimum was 55 years in one day. And as he sentenced me, he told me the sentence was cruel, unjust, and irrational, and he called on then President Bush to commute my sentence to something that was more just. Bush didn't commute it. And so I spent 13 years in prison fighting for my life, fighting for my freedom. My sister, Lisa Angelos, she did an amazing job of building support. I had a lot of people support me. I had uh, people like Janet Reno, Senator Rand Paul was advocating, speaking about my sentence. Senator Mike Lee picked up my cause and he actually introduced a bill essentially in my name. And it took a lot of people actually to get Obama to take some action. We had uh, celebrities, former DOJ officials, former federal judges. And finally on May 31st, I was released. May 31st of 2016. of 2016. So you had two sons when you went to jail. I did, and a daughter. It was rough. I mean, my sons went through some hard times when I came in. I made all the money. I took care of them when I was free. I come to jail, they have nothing. So they went through some hard times. And I think my oldest son, he remembers it. He remembers getting raided by the FBI, coming in, storming in with guns and everything. So I think that affected him. He saw the trial, he saw my sentencing, he witnessed everything the way I was treated. So I think he was affected the most. But after a while, I, st I understood what happened. I researched, I studied law, and I came to uh, understand how I received that sentence and whose fault it is. And ultimately, the, the blame goes to Congress. They gave prosecutors the power to be able to do what they did to me. So that's why my mission right now is to have Congress change these laws. One unique supporter was Charles Koch. Um, he picked up my case, I believe, in 2015, and his vice president, Mark Colden, have been tireless advocates for me. They wanted a face. They wanted to show Congress these laws affect everybody. Are you looking for general criminal justice reform, or are you specifically focused on the laws that govern marijuana? General. I think there's so many aspects that our justice that need to be reformed, not just marijuana, but sentencing, over-criminalization. There's too many criminal laws on the books right now. Like, I don't want to see no one else go through what I went through. And I left a lot of people behind in prison who shouldn't be in there. I had a guy who, who had a dispensary in California, a medical marijuana dispensary. He was following state law, yet he got 22 years. My focus is mostly on drug offenses. 
because I feel like drug offenses are way out of proportion. If you see someone get 20 years for a drug offense and 10 years for a murder, that's backwards to me. Or a child rapist, like my judge made a, a clear point. He said, uh, had he raped a 10 year old child, he would have gotten 11 years. And now he's supposed to give me 55 years for selling marijuana three times. Name me the three top things in criminal justice that piss you off. Uh, I think the power of federal prosecutors. I think they have more, much more power than the judges who, is, who are the referees. Federal uh, prosecutors' discretion and decisions are unreviewable by the courts. They can make a charging decision and it's in secret and you can't challenge it. If a judge makes a decision, you get to appeal it to the higher courts all the way to the Supreme Court. Ending mandatory sentencing will fix some of that because they can't overcharge you, they can't punish you for not pleading guilty, accepting or not cooperating. So that's two things that I think, I think the mandatory sentencing reform will fix some of that. But I would like to see more power given back to the judge. And the, the third thing I think is we have too many criminal laws in the federal code. I think the states are better equipped to deal with th these drug problems. This thousand dollars right here cost me 13 years of my life. A thousand dollars worth of marijuana. It would have cost me 55 years were it not for the people that came to support me and help me get out of this mess. And when you would have gotten out of jail, what do you think would have happened in society at that point? Had I served the 55 years, I would have gotten out of jail and seen marijuana being sold just like cigarettes, just like alcohol. And I'd be just getting out, my whole entire life gone over marijuana.